What's up, guys? I'm John. I'm Sharice. And we're back with another Cupid's Corner. So every week, we come at you guys and give you guys great tips, tricks, and things that hopefully reignite that relationship or help those flames that maybe diminished along the way. Also, we bring some of our own stories and some of our own experiences into this. <laughs> and uh, this week, we want to share one of those stories with you guys. Uh, you know, this story kind of goes hand in hand with a lot of questions we get out there. So I get a lot of questions from a lot of different people. First off, when they find out that we have a son, they're like, oh my God, you yeah. guys have a son? I know, right? You guys have a kid? Really? Like, how old is, how old is your kid? And like, we tell them like, he's 11, going to turn 12. Oh my God, like, <laughs> really? Like, when did this happen? <laughs> well, this happened a long time ago, about 11 years ago, 12 yeah, yeah. years ago, of, you know, because of the childbirth, nine months, so... It's, it's been a long time now. So, you know, it's it's something people, they, they don't, I don't I don't think they realize or they, I don't know. They just they just don't think that we can do it. I, I don't know. I, think, I, I don't know. Maybe it's, I, honestly, what I think personally is probably just like our lifestyle, you know, because we do a lot of, we blend in a lot of things that like, if usually it's almost like you just have a family only or you just have like a going out life only or you just have a work life only. Me and John have somehow managed to balance it where we have a little of everything. I mean, it's, it's not an easy task by Absolutely any means. Not. It's actually pretty hard, but it's doable if you want to make it happen. So, you know, that's probably why, you know, they yeah. just, uh, they're appalled. Yeah. And then, <laughs> so then the next question is like, all right, John, it's like, what, what's, when's the right time? When's the right time to have a kid? And I know everybody says this too, and this is what my response is. There's never a right time. It's never going to be perfect. Right. No matter if you have a lot of money and you're working all the time, you're like, oh, I don't want to give this up, or you don't have that much money, and you're like, man, I, you know, I want to give my kid everything. Mm -hmm. You know, because every, every parent should want to do that. They want to provide for their kid the best. Right. And you know, they're like, well, I'm not in the financial situation where I can do that. You never you know? are. And you know, and, and me, me and Charisse, you know, we weren't, we, we, we weren't, nope. we, were, we weren't in Nine the best plus. situation. Um, you know, at, at the point where we decided we wanted to have Peter, you know, we were, we were financially stable to a certain extent, but you know, we didn't have Titan. It wasn't like all that when we first decided we were going to have our son, um, because I knew it was going to be a son right off the bat. I told Charisse, <laughs> I told all the family members and anybody that I said, him, I didn't want no girls, like, man. Just for that, you're going to have a girl. And I was like, I, I listen. I only shoot Y chromosomes, okay? <laughs> My family only shoots Y chromosomes, and I'm gonna have a boy. So I don't care. I can. I'll, I'll, I'll scream it off the mountains and off the heavens. I told him I was gonna give it back to the baby stork if it was a girl. So, <laughs> and I guaranteed it. I guaranteed. It. I was like, listen, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a son. My first go around, I can guarantee it. So, you know, at that point, it was like, we decided, you know, we're gonna go through with this. We're gonna have our baby. We're boom, gonna be married. Bam. All these good things. Um, it happened really quick for us. Like, you know, like other really people, <laughs> other people that looked at our relationship, you know, that was another thing that they doubted. They're like, Oh, for sure. Because I mean, we literally were only together. I, it was a very, it was probably like six months Yeah. and we decided it wasn't like an unplanned pregnancy. It wasn't like, right. oops, no, no, no. We like planned it. It was all based on my endometriosis and the doctors, even when he came to the, my doctor's appointments, they were like, she's probably not gonna be able to get pregnant. Right. And now of course, John's like, I'm up to the challenge. Ha ha ha. I'm going to make this happen. <laughs> so, you know, of course, there you go. Boom. Made it happen. Absolutely. Um, but it was planned. And everybody did think we were a little crazy, but obviously we're not that crazy. Yeah, you know, and a lot of people out there want to have kids still. And, you know, honestly, fertility's down across the big country. Time, big and time. And if you guys are looking to do any fertility or anything like that, type medical center, we can help you out here. Um, just want to throw that in there for you guys. A lot of people do want to have kids still, and, and some people are having trouble and stuff like that, along with COVID and all these different problems that could be having issues with the body. Mm -hmm. But at that point, we planned it. We started on our way. Sharice was pregnant with Peter. Um, you know, obviously, you have to wait nine months for that bad boy to cook. And along that way, was it was a Longest really good experience. Nine months ever. You know, um, I feel for some of the people now because, you know, without COVID before, you know, I went to every uh, every doctor's appointment with Sharice, no matter if I was working or yeah, whatever it was. Every single I one. made sure I was there. We did like the 3D sonogram, ultrasound, which was That's really cool. cool and cutting edge back then. Really cool. And now they have 4D. Oh, man. You and really like you see. go in this big room yeah, and you see cool. it, like you can bring family members in there. Yeah. And, and I don't know what COVID now, like I literally talked to one of my friends who just got, you know, his girl pregnant and they're like, you know, some of these hospitals or some doctors still don't want him to come in or oh anything like that. Oh my goodness, that would that, be terrible. That's a shame, you know, because it's an experience that you guys bond even more with this or should be, you know. Right. And sometimes you can't be there all the time. I understand that with work and stuff like that. So 
but definitely if if you can make the effort do it yeah it um, does mean a lot to us females just you know, so you know it's support it's support and with yeah. hormones all crazy and going all nuts with females <laughs> you know they need that extra security you know because yeah. anxiety kicks in insecurities kick in their body starts changing yeah you know they're looking not so you know we're like woohoo look at me i'm so sexy yes no yes. not really Yes. You know, and you know, then you start thinking crazy things and you're crazy. Yes. You know, so be there, support. Um, it's going to get a little crazy, but don't worry. You know, support your girl, your wife, whatever it is. Um, make them feel secure and they won't come at you like that, hopefully. You know, if you do things that make them feel insecure, it's going to just enhance that even more and they're going to be even worse with you. So that's just a tip from me. From a guy, <laughs> guy, okay. Um, so the next thing was, was, all right, so let's fast forward. Okay. So Sharice was working all the way up until the, yes, the due Yes, I did. Date, okay? I worked all the way up to the due date. So literally, so when we went to the doctor and everything like that, they, they give you a due date and they say, listen, on the due date, this is when you're expected to Peter have came the on the actual day that he was due. Yeah. So that was, that never happened. That they just, never that's happens. like a roundabout date. That Usually it's happens. like a couple of days before, a week after, a week before, yeah. whatever. He was literally delivered on the day. Yep. Yeah. On the day. On the day. On the day. Yeah. And, um, you know, and it happened to be Father's Day, too. So that <laughs> cool. was just, it was really, really cool. Worked out. And, you know, Peter asked me just the, you know, a little bit ago, he's like, hey, he was like, you know, did mom still get you a gift? And I was like, yeah, she gave me you. That was the best <laughs> gift ever, right? You know, as a, as a man, you, you definitely want your son, you know, that's, that's your offspring, that's your legacy, that's who's going to hopefully pass on your name down the road and be everything. You want to, you know, invest in them the most you possibly can. It's your biggest investment except for yourself. Mm -hmm. So she works all the way up into the delivery date. Mm -hmm. So that night, she literally cooked the steak dinner and everything for me. I, I knew, remember. though, because I was already before this, like, t like literally, it was like a week before I was having the Braxton Hicks is what they call it, right? Mm -hmm. And so I knew that this was coming. So that night, I told him, I'm like we're gonna have this baby tonight like mm -hmm. i'm telling you i'm i'm having real contractions yeah. i think we need to go to the hospital and of course like i'm like i don't want him to be cranky so i'm like i'm gonna cook a steak dinner we're gonna we're gonna eat i'm literally like in the kitchen like <gasps> like probably every i want to say probably like every 45 minutes it would come like in a way where it was like super painful yeah. and i'm like all right let, i got this i got this like so let's eat real quick because they're not gonna have any food at the hospital mm -hmm. And so after that, we get in the car. Literally get in the car. Race down there. Driving down there because we picked out a, a hot, one of the top hospitals. We lived in like 45 minutes 45 from. Minutes. So we had to drive all the way there. So we drove all the way there. And of course, it's in the middle of the night. So there's a shift change going out with nurses. <laughs> so after she's dilated in the whole nine, oh they're like, oh, all right, listen, it's time to go. So at that point, they're like, you know what? We don't have enough nurses, enough staffs on hand. So we're gown up. I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, I want to be the like the movies, like you know, they come give me, hey, your son's born, awesome. You know, this whole time cigars, though, don't cigars. let him forget the this backstory here. He's telling me this whole time, he's like, I'm not gonna be in that room, you know. I'm like, oh yes, you are. I'm not gonna be in that. I'll be out in the lobby waiting. They're gonna come and get me. I'm like, you've been watching too many movies. You're gonna be in that room. Absolutely. You're gonna be in that room. Absolutely. And the worst part about this whole entire situation, this was the worst part. I'll never forget it. Is that in all the movies, they give you this white sheet. And they put the white sheet over yeah. you, and you have the baby. It was like a drape, you know, and like you no know, you white have, sheet. You have nurses. No, and, no white sheet, no drape, no nothing. Just but that. Yeah. And so it's like, <laughs> hey, listen, you know, we don't have enough nurses. The shift changed and all that. You're gonna hold a leg. I'm sorry. I'm like, what are you like, talking about? I'm a whole leg. I have leg? To, now I have to be in this process too. <laughs> this is crazy. So literally, I'm on one side of, the, of her body <laughs> holding her leg. <laughs> One other nurse is on the other side, and a doctor's right in the middle. And at that point, he's like, "Let's do this, push, push." Now that didn't go. It didn't. It didn't take too long. Cause somebody's asked me like, "How long does it usually take?" Usually, it takes. You're usually pushing for hours and hours. Man, me and Peter, we were the team. Yeah. Forty-five minutes, bah, he done. was done. I don't think that ever happens. They told me too. They warned me. In your first pregnancy, you're going to be pushing. You're, you're yeah. going to be in labor. You'll be pushing probably a few hours. So yeah. I'm like, pushing for a few hours? Yeah. I'm like, no, 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 no. We're going to make this happen. Yeah. You're coming out. I'm letting you know we're coming out. Yeah. He was ready to come out too. So so at that point, out. listen, I'm telling you guys, it, it's definitely graphic what you see. <laughs> and it'll definitely stay with I'm you like, for the rest of your life. Touch okay? Me again. What you see. But at that point, listen, this is something that it, it turns into a good memory. You know, you remember when your kid comes out. And you get to see, you know, what, what actually goes on. So it, it is definitely a truly humbling experience and something that will stay with you forever, okay? Um, and at that point, you know, finally Peter was born. Healthy, happy, you know, at that point we were happy. 
And then look at the grand result of what we got here. <laughs> so luckily, he was, he was kind enough to, to grace us with this. his beautiful face today <laughs> in the office because I usually don't get him. So he, he got to... You got to come down after his school today, and I was like, you know what? Let's do this topic today, and let's talk about it, because he's here in the office. You want to give a big smile for everybody and say hi? Hi. <laughs> <laughs> so this is an 11-year-old sixth grader, you know, going on to seventh grade after this. He's really so, going on, like, 21. Yeah, but. so, but listen, it's never a right time, so if you and your, your partner love each other, and you want to do that, go forth with it, man. Everything else will fall in place, mm -hmm. and you'll do what you got to do to make things happen Perfect. financially for your relationship. You know, remember, be each other's support system. Mm -hmm. You know, the biggest thing that I see out there today is a lot of a lot of people are just so easy to call it quits. Yeah. All right? And that's one thing, you know, like if you don't have kids involved. But when you have kids involved, it could affect them in a lot of different ways. And a lot of people have been, you know, in these broken up families. And not to say that stepdads and stepmoms aren't great because, listen, my dad, right, married my mom and at that point she had my brother which is my half brother and he took him in like it was his own mm -hmm. and you know that happens out there too and that's a great thing but if you can stay together and keep that nuclear family together there's nothing like that okay and it, it, it stills these ethics and morals and things that we're missing these days with these kids yep. and that is our future right there that's your future our future and these are the guys or girls, okay, because your girls are out there, just important. Yeah, girl and, power. And you guys are going to be ruling this country and making decisions about what we're going to be doing when we're old, okay? <laughs> so please, I beg of you guys, if you guys are our age, you guys are having kids, or you guys are thinking about having kids, do it. Do it for the right reasons, though. And make sure you guys are in it to win it together, and you guys do everything you possibly can to stay together and create the best life for your kids out there. Don't abuse them. Give everything you possibly can to them. And that's Cupid's Corner for this week. Yeah. We want to, you know, sum it up pretty quick. Um, but you know, that was our, our story. I guess in a little fast. This turned thing. out. This turned out pretty good. Turned out pretty good. It's still an experiment, though. <laughs> so we're still going. So you know, it's a. Uh, it's it, not it's, an experiment. I'm telling you, he's he's you're, he's good. He's, he's good. good. So hopefully, this will be the future of Tight Medical Center, uh -oh. and, and hopefully, take care of us. But. Uh, <laughs> That's just our story to you guys. Hopefully it entertained you guys a little bit. You guys learned a little bit. And hopefully you guys will take that to heart what I told you guys. Yeah. So that's another Cupid's Corner. Thank you guys for tuning in. We're here for you guys every Sunday, 11 a.m. on ABC. And if you guys you know, want to, you guys can DVR it. Or you guys can always check it out on our YouTube page. Just type in Tight Medical Center. All these shows are on there. And our social media platforms. Go check it out. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. And TikTok now. Mm -hmm. So we appreciate you guys all tuning in. We'll see you guys next Sunday. I'm John. I'm Sharice. This is Peter. And this is Peter. <laughs> we'll see you guys next week on another Cupid's Corner. See ya.